Hi, I'm James P. Friel. And I'm Dean Holland. It's time to fasten your seatbelts, boys and girls. That's right. If you're an entrepreneur who's wanting to take your business to the next level and have a bit of fun while getting cutting edge advice on your business, marketing, and sales, welcome to Just the Tips, arguably the best podcast in the entire world. I guess that's good, right? Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. That was easy. That was the easiest thing we did all day. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Just the Tips. This is your host, James P. Friel. I am thrilled that you guys are here with us today. Uh, today, it is me and my co-host, Mr. Dean Holland, talking about a topic that um, I would I would argue has had one of the single biggest impacts um, on my business and my personal life and just uh, just so many things in general. I'm really, really excited that we're, we're talking about this uh, with you guys today. And uh, I see him. He's ready. He's done procrastinating. He's getting. He's slowly climbing off of his white noble steed. Nonetheless, regard. Welcome to the studio, the one, the only bearded wonder from the United Kingdom, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dean Holland. Woo! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Flying in off the steed. <laughs> yeah, not from what I saw. You're taking your happy time getting off of that thing today. <laughs> I'm not, not as young as I used to be, my friend. I'm not quite as flexible. Oh, is that what it is? I have to be careful with these moves. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the good news is um, even if you fell off of said high horse, um, your beard is starting to come back in. I think it would cushion your fall. Indeed. Uh, That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. I'm hiding my many chins that are growing under me. That's good. That's a good tactic. I like it. We can't even tell anymore. It's just like one giant chin now covered in hair. Um, <laughs> oh, well, how are you doing, my friend? Anyway, I'm good awesome, man. So, so you uh, you were on uh, holiday, as you call it, over in yes. uh, the UK. How'd that go for you? Yeah, well, good. I can't complain about it, but... It was what they're now calling a staycation during the pandemic period, where it's like you just take time out in your own country and try and have a holiday here, which I guess if you don't live here, I'm sure that's great. But we had it. We had a nice time. So we we did like we went to this place called York. We went to these like I've taken a new fascination in Vikings since watching a few Netflix shows. So we went to this Viking center. I learned <laughs> all about Vikings. <laughs> what exactly is a Viking center? So, like, in this place we went, York, was where a lot of Viking settlements were when they, like, invaded and took over everywhere. So this Viking center was where they'd done this huge dig and they'd recovered, like, a, they'd found oh, a wow. whole Viking village underground. And, well, the, the ground level was lower back then. They found, like, 40,000 artifacts and homes and weapons. And so now they've built this center so you can go down and they give you a tour and you can uh, do that. I'm uh, I'm going to be incredibly disappointed if you tell me that you did not buy a Viking helmet with horns. Well, you are going to be disappointed, as was I, when everything that they had that I was interested in, an axe, uh, <laughs> like an, a, a helmet thing, was all sold out. It was like everyone had <laughs> bought everything moments before I went in. Like I was planning on leaving an actual Viking. I was right. going out there with weapons and everything. Yeah, and that just fell apart on you, huh? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. But but vacation wise, it was good, but I didn't feel like I rested. Right. You no, know, like when you just go away and you don't do anything. I was kind of needing that right now, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, it's because you're all worked up about the Vikings. You know, this they weren't it. they weren't very restful people. So you're probably just following their suit. Yes, I ended up just pillaging local stores, to be honest. So you're, uh, is it safe to say at this stage you're an honorary Viking now? I think so. I yeah. think that's how it works. I've got, the, right. I've got the beard. I've got a miniature Viking helmet and yep. loitering around. And you did a little pillaging, a little like side hustle slash side pillaging. <laughs> yeah. My pillaging business. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no wonder you don't feel recovered. Like you started a whole other enterprise while you were gone. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have a good domain for that? Pillaging.com or anything cool? I, I think I need to. We should probably yeah. not say any more before everyone tries to sell them to me at twice the price. Right. Well, just like the, the helmets and the axes and everything ran out, the good domains for this enterprise might be running out as well. <laughs> um, be incredibly yeah. disappointing if that happened, but <laughs> you better get on it. You got to, you know, I mean, in the spirit of being a Viking, I think they were action takers. Like, you can't sit on this. 
No, this is true. This is true. If anyone was an action taker, it was the Vikings. Yes, that's right. They yeah. didn't take no for an answer. No, they certainly <laughs> did not. Um, uh, anyway, so, uh, well, we're we're not really here to talk about Vikings today necessarily. Oh, um, oh right. although, well, uh, although I feel like our topic does have some relationship with the spirit in which the Vikings work with each other. Oh, I, I think I think I can kind of go along with the link. It's, yeah, it's, it's a stretch. It's, it's a stretch, but we'll go with it. It's a very dubious connection, but we're going to make it so that we can move the show forward from talking about you and the Viking Center and being out of the Viking souvenirs and all the disappointment that came along with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but when you and I were talking about what uh, what we wanted this show to be, you know, I think you know, we've both had a very, very similar experience in our uh, lives and in our businesses where you getting an echo on me. I'm, I'm not. No. no, you're okay. All right, good. If I start um, hearing two of you, I'm, I'm gone. One of you is bad enough. So, right. Yeah. And I'm not even a Viking um, <laughs> is, uh, is, you know, how to make, uh, how to make a massive impact on, uh, on your impact and your income. And yeah. the, uh, the, the number one thing that I've found and where we're going to kind of get into this is really about surrounding yourself with the right people. Yes. Right. Yes. Like without that element in my life, I, I legitimately can tell you, I don't know where I would be right now. Well, I can tell you one thing. We wouldn't be on this show. No, we wouldn't be on this show, which to some people might be a blessing, but to other people, they're like, all right, I'm glad this show is happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but you and I have, uh, have a similar, you know, background experience and, and this isn't, you know, you know, we're going to talk about masterminds and we're going to talk about networks and we're going to talk about all these different things and how to make the most of them and how to leverage them. This isn't necessarily saying that tomorrow you have to run out and you have to join a mastermind. What it is saying is you must raise the awareness for yourself that the people that you are surrounding yourself with are if not the, one of the, if not the most important factors in your success personally and professionally. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think, uh, I think one thing that I just want to say right out the gate or a topic for us to maybe discuss and touch on, because I I've seen it in the past where this type of discussion comes up to somebody that's maybe not thought this way in the past. And they, they automatically think, wait, are you telling me I've got to drop all my friends and everyone I know? Yes. You know, is it, is it like, are you, are you, is that, is that what we're saying here that like, Oh, everybody that you hang out with and you know, like you've got to get rid of them now. It's time for you 100%, to hundred percent. That's exactly what we're saying. <laughs> Drop your friends, you know, don't ever talk to your family again. Like yeah. all of that. Yes, of course. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh no, wait a second. That's ridiculous <laughs> to think that you have to do. <laughs> right. right. I, I always find it amusing when people think in such extremes. <laughs> right? They're like, oh, well, I'm not allowed to hang out with my wife or my husband anymore because they're not like blah, blah, blah. No, like that's not what we're saying. It's not what we're saying at all. I'm glad you're addressing this. And I'm also um, uh, unapologetically being sarcastic about the answer to that question. Indeed. I wouldn't right? expect any less, though. Well, I think it's I think it's important for people to understand that we're not just like, no, that doesn't mean I, like I want to emphatically say like I'm doing my best to mock people who are asking that question for their own benefit. Yes, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so what we're saying is, is you can keep your loser friends, your hateful <laughs> wife. <and> you <laughs> no, I think what we're saying is like there's there. Of course, you're going to keep the relationships that are close to you, but you need to develop a circle of people with whom you can aspire and with whom uh, you can challenge each other and who inspire you and all of these different things, because without having an element of that in your life, you will stay where you are, right? Absolutely. People, people are, um, are uh, not to go all you know, uh, mathematical or geeky here. People are mean reverting, which means like we are like we, you know, uh, Jim Rohn said it best. You are the average of the five people that you hang around with the most. Yeah. Right. So the average is just the mean. And like, we're like coming to the mean, like, all right, well, what's normal for my group and what's normal for your group will become normal for you. Yeah. Which means if you are hanging out with a group of meth heads, there's a really good chance You'll become a meth head. 
Right. Right. Shout out to all of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to all the meth heads out there. Like, keep keep going. Although I did, I did have. <laughs> while you're talking, I'm gonna find. <laughs> I'm gonna find the meme that was like inspiring about meth heads. Um, <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. It was something. It was something along the lines of, "Have you ever met?" Uh, and I think it was meth heads, but it could have been any drug addict or whatever. It was that, have you ever met a meth head who ran out of meth? And then just like shrugged their hands and said, oh, well, I guess no more meth for me. And they're like, (laughs) they do whatever it takes to get their meth and whatever their drug of choice is. And a lot of entrepreneurs are like, oh, I guess it's not going to work for me. I'm just going to throw my hands up in the air. And they're like, be like the meth head. And I was just like, oh, my God, I never would have made that connection in my life. (laughs) But it is true, right? Like at no point are they not willing to do whatever it takes to get what they want. And, yes. um, and I think that's, uh, you know, that's a, a major challenge for a lot of people, but that notwithstanding, we're talking about how you become most like the people that you hang around with the most. Definitely. And I think, I think one really important point just to, to make early on in this is that I think, I think the understanding behind ex- everything that we're saying here, I'm going to talk about in terms of you, you know, the average of the people you hang out with most, et cetera, what we've all got to acknowledge and understand is how impressionable we all are of, of yeah. all ages. Like I'm, I'm sure I, yes, the older you get, like I'm sure somebody at 70 years old isn't as impressionable as somebody at 30, but equally the person at 30 is not as going to be as impressionable as somebody at 10 years of age. And I think what, what I notice a lot, cause I've, you know, I've got quite a few friends now that have younger children and I see, you know, I see that people are very aware when they look at their offspring or young young people, their children, et cetera, people are very, very aware of how impressionable children are, you know, and yeah. oftentimes you'll see people, you know, change children's school because they feel, oh, you know, there's a bad crowd at that school or my child's got in with a bad crowd. I need to change this. I don't want my son or my daughter hanging out with these bullies or these bad kids that are, you know, hanging out on street corners and cr- creating you know, disruption to the community, things like this. So as adults, we would look at younger people, children, et cetera, and see that very clearly. And, and oftentimes we'll act on it. But what people, what I, what I perceive is that a lot of times people seem to have that impression only of the young. It's like young and impressionable, young and naive, young and dumb, young and stupid. Yet we are still highly impressionable as adults. I mean, Absolutely. when you think about it, I'm going to take something to an extreme here. Like I've, you know, watched certain TV shows uh, like Homeland, for example. Like, and you see where adults are taken away and essentially brainwashed to completely change their beliefs. They can take, you know, a, a, a very American guy, for example, and within a space of like 12 months, turn him into a, a, a terrorist attacking his own people. That's how impressionable and people can be changed. And I, I take that to the extreme. But if you can see the extreme of a child being impressionable, hanging out with the wrong people and forming bad habits early on, and you can see the extreme on the other side of how any adult can be taken and have their core beliefs altered and changed through all kinds of therapy and treatment that are given to those people to make that happen. What we need to acknowledge is if those things are true and we can easily agree that they're both true, could we not comprehend then that every single one of us to some degree is impressionable and open to being to having your views changed, your views altered? Because if someone repetitively says the same thing to you, I mean, I can it's all kinds of examples. Mike Tyson paying a guy just to follow him at the height of his career saying, you're the man, Mike, you're the man. Like No one's going to beat <laughs> right. you, Mike. Like, what is he doing there? He's conditioning his mind so that this guy as a trained fighter and a killer now believes no one can beat me. I'm the man. I'm an animal. I'm a killer. I'm this. I'm that because he's had it drilled into him. And what we're saying is, is that none of us in a in a, a conventional lifestyle are going to have somebody that's telling us a one thing over and over again every 60 seconds of eight hours a day. But what we are going to do is we're going to have a core friendship group of people. And I find the older you get, the smaller that Friendship group tends to get, it gets tighter. I found, at least that's my experience, it gets tighter. And I think what we really need to take note of, every single one of us, everyone listening and watching, is do not think, do not naively think that you are not impressionable to have your viewpoints or your beliefs or or everything about you altered by the people 
and the messages that you are getting. Because if you want to think about it crudely in that way, the conversations you have with people, let's just say they're messages. So if the messages that you constantly hear are things like, oh, the world is so bad. Everybody's struggling. No one can afford to do anything like mm -hmm. this and that. What, am, what are you going to leave thinking like? You I might guess the world is so bad. I guess everyone's struggling. Exactly. I guess I can't afford to do anything. Exactly. And now your actions, the way in which you go about your day-to-day -day life, are going to be impacted by the messages which you're being told, which ultimately creates a core belief in your own self. You yeah. know, and this is ultimately what we're getting at here is like every single one of us is susceptible to having those impressions, those opinions, those beliefs, which impacts your actions. Every single one of us is susceptible to having those things altered by the environment in which we put ourselves in, which is formed by the people in which we surround ourselves by. I think Absolutely. if we, we can all comprehend that, now we can put some real emphasis and, on port and importance on this conversation we're having in that you need to be consciously aware of those people that are in that circle of yours, especially yeah. those that are closest to you that you are exposed to on a more frequent or consistent basis. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, uh, the interesting thing about this is it's, it's so subliminal that most people don't see it happening. And, um, and most people think like, Oh, well, my, my reality is what it is. Really, your reality is shaped by the beliefs that you have <clears throat> and the beliefs that you have, generally speaking, are created and formed by the people around you and you adopt similar beliefs, right? This is why, you know, there's, I mean, for, for human, you know, the history of humankind, people have had, you know, tribes and they've had, you know, right? We're talking about Vikings here, right? The Vikings had a set of beliefs. And those beliefs drove their behavior, right? And if they had different beliefs, then, you know, they would have had uh, different behavior. But those, those beliefs were normal for their group. And right. if you have a group of people who it's, you know, like you're saying, it's, uh, you know, we're, well, we can't afford things or, you know, it's just too hard or the, you know, the, the government's out to get us or whatever it is, <clears throat> Eventually, you're just like, oh, yeah, well, that's how it is. But that's not how it is for everybody. Right. Right. It's different for everybody because everybody has different beliefs. And but there's these clusters. And what we're advocating here is how do you level up your own beliefs is by surrounding yourself with people who have beliefs that are producing results that you want to adopt. Yes. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and for me, this wasn't, this wasn't very clear until, um, I, actually, I, I think this first occurred to me <clears throat> late 2013 at a Tony Robbins event. And I first heard this concept of like, oh, you're like, you got to like really, you know, be careful of your peer group. And I was like, all right, well, like, what's this about? And I made a commitment at that event that one of my one of my goals over the next year was to level up my peer group and it didn't mean like you know excommunicating people from my life it didn't mean any of that like you know making people wrong for who they were it was just like what would another level of my peer group look like like who are the people that are inspiring to me who are doing things that i think are cool who are living in a way that is consistent with the way that i want to be living you know both from um you know results, but also who they've become as people. And so I made a commitment to level up my peer group very intentionally. And, you know, just, just started, you know, meeting new people and pulling new people into my world and, you know, joined, uh, I joined, I did join, uh, you know, a new mastermind and all these different things. And it became so obvious to me over the course of that year, what an impact that was having on, um, my attitude you know, going from, you know, shaking some things of like feeling like a victim sometimes to um, even, you know, just like results in my life that I wasn't happy with. And then and then starting to develop and like taking more personal responsibility for things to, you know, business started to improve and all these different things. 
and it was I was doing things differently, but getting to the root of it, like where did it come from? It came from the people that I started spending more and more time with were doing things differently. And so that became the new normal. And yeah. it was almost impossible yeah. not to do things differently, not to show up differently, not to show up with greater levels of personal responsibility because it would be abnormal in that group. Yes. Yes. No, I, no, I love this. And I, I think I think there's a couple of great things you've said there to, to draw out for people. And one is that you intentionally, you made an intention to improve or change your, your peer group and put yourself in yeah. those situations. I think that's a, a really, really important point for everybody listening. You know, this topic that we're talking about, you don't just, it doesn't just happen. You don't just think, oh, I wish I had a, a friend, a, a group, a peer group, like what you're talking about. That would be nice. Like you don't, you don't just think this type of thing into fruition. Unfortunately, there's no law of attraction to this part. This is actually, you have to have an intention. You have to go and get it because here's one of the things that I can recall upon looking back. Like this is, this isn't a subject, you know, let's be clear. We're not talking about a subject that people listening to this have, have likely never heard anyone to approach a subject like this right. before. You hear it all the time. Your network is your net worth and all these kind of things. So these, these are the type of messages that you're going to hear a lot of times. And there's a reason for that. And I think one of the things that I recall though, early on is that you hear this type of thing and you probably don't really know like, well, how do I find this group that you're talking about? Where do these people located? And so I think as a default, or at least my experience, I don't know if you, you you might be the same, James, or others listening might be able to relate at least. But what what I thought that you would do is you almost, at least I did, I, I defaulted to turning to the people that I thought cared about me most that already existed in my life. So, for example, I would turn to my mum my family, my parents. And I would, I would be so excited. I'd be telling them, you know, I've, I've, I think I've stumbled upon something. I, I think there's a, this concept of building an internet business and, you know, I've, it sounds really exciting. It sounds like something I can really do. I think I can learn this. I think I can do this. And you, I think a lot of times you'll turn first initially to those people because you're turning to people that you, you know, love you, care about you. You think they have your best interests at heart. And what more often than not, what will typically happen, I'm sure there's people that don't have this experience, but what I was always met with was actually not the response that I'd anticipated. So I kind of turned to my existing peer group, friends, family. And actually what happened is that people didn't support my goals, actually. People didn't greet me with, you know, oh, Dean, congratulations on finding this. Like, work hard. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Like, we're behind you. We support you. What I was initially greeted with and met with through friends, family was a lot of doubt, a lot of negativity. And, you know, to begin with, I thought, what is wrong with, you know, how can you say these things? You're supposed to love me. You're supposed to care about me. <laughs> and I just want to mention this because I realized looking back that these weren't the right people to turn to. And the response that I was given, I want to share this for anyone that's been met with that type of response from people that they, too, feel should have their best interests at heart. And here's the reality. When you're met with negativity from the people that you've shared your dream or your goals with or your plans with, if you're turning to people such as parents or best friends, relatives, whatever, that you know do love you and care for you, what you're likely actually experiencing those instances, those people believe that by trying to discourage you, they are protecting you. Mm -hmm. they, their belief is, is that they're doing the right thing in their mind. And what they believe to be happening here is, is they are protecting you from the certain pain you will experience in their eyes by pursuing this dream of yours. Because what you might find is, and, and what we can really, I think, agree on is that everybody's beliefs and opinions are formed from their own experiences as they have traveled for, through life. Now, your parents, your friends, they might be incredible people. They might love you. They might do anything for you. But if they didn't dare step out in their experiences to pursue a dream, or maybe they did have the courage to do it and they failed and never got back up again and they gave up on their dream. What is their belief? Their belief is, is that that pursuit is going to lead to ultimate pain and disappointment. And the way to avoid that is to settle down into a career or into a job just as they did and acknowledge that that's the least painful and best way to go. And that might actually be true. It might be the least painful way to go. It doesn't make it the right way to go. And this is where, again, we're going to come back to here is like being very consciously aware of 
who you entrust with that role. You know, if you want to share your dream with somebody, you're ultimately looking for somebody to give you support, to validate you, to believe in you, to encourage your dreams. But unfortunately, the people that you may have closest to you right now might be people that believe they're doing best by you by discouraging you. Yeah. And that, that's something that took me a long, long time to realize. I used to think, why, why are you doing this? You know, I used to think you clearly don't love me. You clearly dislike me. Otherwise, you'd be supporting me. And what I realized after many years is these people do think they're helping me. And that's where, again, it's just such an important thing to be aware of. And I think this is where then that shift has to take place. And I hope, the reason I share that is, is that I, I hope that people that are just kind of never been into a, a mastermind or a network or surrounded themselves with a different type of person that will understand and support and believe in your dreams. If you've never done that, then you probably will make that same mistake I did because, like I say, you believe that those closest to you now have your best interests at heart. And they probably do, but their beliefs may not be aligned with yours. That's right. That's right. And and case in point, like I want I want the best for you, but I also don't like you. So like Very true. There's, there's that too, right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's not Very always true. it's not always cut and dry like that. No, I think I think that's absolutely right. And it's a it's a misunderstanding of where that advice comes from. You know, and everybody and what what is good for one person might be good for them. Like maybe it was better for them to because they didn't have the risk appetite or they didn't want the things that you want or all of those things. We're on a very individual journey as people. And it's important that we find people who are uh, who are on similar journeys. Right. right. That we can, you know, have as our, our core group of people. You know, it's it's interesting. I watched this uh, this documentary just the other day on this crazy marathon that takes place here in the U S and uh, Tennessee once a year, I think, and it's called the Barkley marathon. And it uh, it's, it's basically a 20 mile loop through the woods, 12,000 foot elevation change up 12,000 foot elevation change down. And you do it five times <laughs> and you have to complete the five loops in 60 hours um, in order to win. And in the, I don't know, 20 or 30 years that they've been doing it, I think only 12 people have finished it. And um, anyway, so they're, they're interviewing this one guy who's one of the, uh, one of the guys in the race. And he sat there and he was on, you know, this is obviously a very intense adventure. And he sat there and he was talking about, you know, I thought for a long time, I was going to wait until I was retired before I traveled the world. And before I did all the things that uh, you know, I, I was excited about doing, and I was just going to put my nose to the grindstone and, uh, and work until retirement. And then I was going to do these things that were exciting to me. And he's like, and that was the advice that my dad had been giving me. And he said, but, uh, a few years ago, my dad died <clears throat> and he died one year before his retirement. And he, and he never got to experience all the things that he had been delaying and deferring and all this. And so that situation for him was a defining moment where he was like, wait a second, you know, my dad was doing those things because he thought they were the right thing to do. And he was telling me to do them because he thought they were the right thing to do. He had my best interests in mind and all that. But it turns out, I think there's a different way for me. Right. And right. that and that was his experience and why he chose to run that race, which is a very, very difficult challenge. But I think that applies to what you're talking about here, too. It doesn't have to be a physical race that you're saying yes to. It's, uh, you know, it could be a, a, a personal development race. It could be a financial race. It could be whatever race you want to race. You should surround yourself with people who are running in a similar race. Right. right. Because. Because for people who don't want to do this Barkley marathon and don't want to run five loops around a mountaintop and the equivalent elevation change of running up and down Mount Everest several times to what to everyone else, those people are crazy. Right. Yeah. To those people who are there running that race together, we are admittedly maybe crazy, but this is our normal and we want to be here and doing this. Right. right. And, uh, and so those people become more like the people that, they're surrounded with, and to to further carry this point forward, the um, before the documentary, only ten people had finished the race ever, and the guy who had finished tenth 
decided to run it again because he wanted to get the fastest time ever. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he had previously finished it in 58 hours and he's like, there was somebody else who had the fastest time and now he wanted to beat that guy. Like that was his new challenge. But there was another guy who was his first time running the race and he paired up with the guy who finished the race the year before. And he actually finished the race that time as well. Wow. Yes. Right. Yeah. Now, if he had paired up with somebody who had never done the race before, who didn't care about the race, who was like, I'm, this is too hard. I'm going to drop out or whatever. Chances are really good. He wouldn't have finished the race either. And at the end of the documentary, he's talking about how the guy who was there the year before who finished it, who he raced with, it made all the difference for him to finish it the year that he did it. And it is so, I think it's such a great analogy for what we're mm. talking about here with this entrepreneurial journey and, and, you know, starting a business, running a business, growing a business, like all of those things. Because if you are, if you have in your peer group, people who are on that same race, people who have done it before, it becomes infinitely more likely that you will create that result too. Just like the guy who ran that crazy marathon in the woods. Yes. Oh, such a good analogy. I think that really just, that really hits it home. That was a good one. It's a good one. I'll commend you on that. <laughs> Thanks. I didn't even know that analogy was going to come up while I was watching this documentary. I was just watching. I was like, this is nuts. Right. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, there was also this like secret feeling. Maybe I should try this too at some point, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but I think that it makes, it makes all the difference who you surround yourself with and you have to, this is another thing to add on to this, what, especially what you were saying about the people who are saying, hey, don't do it. You know, it's not worth it, like all that stuff. But they mean well. Mm. Um, the, the feeling that I had for a while with people like that was a feeling of judgment, I'm sorry to say. Right. Like I judged them for not wanting the same things as me. Yes. And, yeah. and kind of like made them wrong for, oh, well, you don't want to grow a business? Like, why? Like, what's wrong? Yes. And, and so it was almost like going both ways. And, and if anything, that's the most detrimental thing to the current relationships, to the people that are current, currently in your life, is a feeling of judgment towards them for their feedback towards what you want. Instead, yeah. it's so much better if you just accept them for who they are and for what's important to them True. and run and run your own race and not have that feeling of, well, those people suck because they don't understand me. They don't suck because they don't understand you. They just don't want the same things as you. And that's a hundred percent. Okay. Yes. Like if everybody wanted the same things, this would be a very boring world. Everybody mm -hmm. wants different things and everybody should be free to pursue different things, but it becomes a problem when, you get hooked on and latched on to people who have different desires and beliefs than you and you and they're trying to make you believe what they believe and you're trying to make them believe what you believe instead of just saying it's okay that we disagree we can still be friends yes there's no yeah. problem with that well i think the world has a, a bigger issue with that whole subject generally yeah. <laughs> it's a this what we're talking about i think is a microcosm of that bigger issue, but it still stems from the same place that yeah. we think people who don't want the same things as us, who don't believe the same things as us are wrong. Yeah. I, I love that you actually brought this up because actually I had forgot that piece. That was a memory I couldn't have, but I absolutely had that same thing. And I'll tell you when it happened for me, when I finally did start getting results. Mm. So like I'd gone through like four, four and a half years where, you know, I was trying and I, I couldn't figure things out. I was, I was failing at it. I was losing a lot of money and just nothing was working for me. Now the cycle for me was like at the very beginning when I first discovered this whole internet marketing, internet business stuff, it was like, tell everyone and I'm sure they'll support me. That was the piece I was talking about. Then right. after a while, cause nothing was working. I kind of kept my mouth shut cause I felt stupid cause nothing was working. And now you know, I had nothing good to say. Well, then and, then we at that point, people, and, and then at that point, people were like, see, I told you it wasn't going to work. Exactly. Well, I became, I did. I did, especially in a, you know, I was in a working environment, at a construction company at this stage after like a couple of years. And, uh, you know, it was like a working man's environment. And I, I did become the butt of many jokes. People were like laughing, like, oh, how's that internet thing going, Dean? Laughing in like 
pairs of people. I remember these two guys walking past me once laughing at me. I'll never forget that vision because I stuck it to them when I quit. Um, <laughs> but like, so I went through this period where I was like, at the beginning, tell everyone, oh, no one's supporting me. Like, keep my mouth shut because nothing's working. Then once I started getting results, I absolutely had the same feeling as you. I, I even remember a conversation with one guy who was at the construction company. And I remember the distinct feeling, like you've just said there, where I felt like, what is wrong with you? Why would you not want to do what I've just told you about? You can see the potential of what I'm doing. And I'll never forget him saying to me, because I was emphasizing in the sense of like, why wouldn't you want to work for yourself and make more money than you are now? Like, mm -hmm. how, could, how can you be, like, how can you compare those two and think that what you're doing is best? It was almost that view from me, like, you're crazy, you're insane. Yeah. And he, I'll never forget his response to me. I can't remember the exact wording, but it was like somewhere along the lines of, I don't need more money. Like, why would I want to do that? I'm good how I am. Yeah. You know, and that was, to me, that was like the first time that I started to dawn on me that, huh, like, not everybody feels the same way I feel. Not everybody is actually striving for more. A lot of people are very happy and content. And some people are living their best life. Absolutely. In, in their situation. More power yeah. to them. Because I think ultimately that's what all we're ever doing is trying, working towards living our best life. It's just we find that fulfillment and happiness in the way in which we do things. And I think it is a, it is a realization when you do have that turning point where you realize like, oh, like not everybody's like me. And like you've just said, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's okay. You know, yeah. I think that is, that is a, I think that's interesting. You've said that. Cause I like I say, I had forgot it, which now like makes me wonder like, Oh, I wonder how common that is that people go through a similar experience like that in our situations. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just know that was, that was definitely something that I, I experienced and, um, and then I just became okay with the fact that other people have other goals. Right. You know, they like the guy that, you know, you were talking to, he's like, why would I need any more money? Like things are exactly where I want them to be. And good, good. Like yeah. if, you're good, if you're good, you're good. Like what, what, like, why do I need to change you? And I think, I think the other thing that happens when you sort of release judgment, um, it doesn't really come back to you anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. You're, uh, right. you're, you're becoming a, you know, a better reflection of, uh, what it's like just to be okay with who you are. And, and that creates a space for other people to be more okay with who they are. And, um, and so, so I think that, you know, kind of moving on a little bit into this mastermind or network conversation, the goal of this is not to eradicate all these other people from your life. The, the topic of this conversation is to say, it's okay for people to be who they are. And that makes it easier for them to be okay with who you are existing yeah. people, right? Family that, you know, um, is all around and, you know, friends that you currently have. And, and then how do you build the right, the, the best support structure to support who you want to become? And that is by, uh, by having people who are on that same race with similar goals, similar beliefs, similar desires, um, who understand more of the detail of who you are and will help you become a better version of yourself, whatever that better version of yourself happens to look like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to get, get your thoughts on this in this area. So in the sense of like, you know, your, your peer group and the people you're surrounding yourself with. So Let's do this just for the purpose of anyone that, say, hasn't put themselves into those kind of environments yet, like you and I have. And they're, they're listening to this and they know it makes sense. You know, of course, th th this topic makes sense. People, I think everybody gets it. It makes sense. But I think a lot of time people don't know really like, well, where do I begin now? It's like when you said, you know, you made a conscious decision to up level or upgrade your, your peer group and, and, and to make a conscious effort around that. What's... Let's 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 maybe have a conversation on then how how people could begin that process. Like somebody's yeah. sitting at home right now, listening to us, and they're sat on their that sat at home. They're thinking, well, well, geez, I only have my brother and my dad that, that's ever I've spoke to about this. Like, where do I begin? Yeah, like, what should I be looking for? Who should I be looking for? Well, I think it depends. You know, it depends on how uh, how intensely you want to go after it. You know, right. if, um, you know, if you're just looking to kind of, you know, test the waters and stuff, 
there groups like, you know, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, like all these different groups, like it's, it's easier now than it's ever been to find a group of people who are trying to do something similar to you. Right. Yes. Um, you know, there's, there's Facebook groups for every imaginable thing. Right. And, right. and then if you're like, all right, I want a great Facebook group for business. There's, you know, Facebook groups for marketers, there's Facebook groups for Facebook advertisers, dozens of them. Right. And so it's like, well, where, you know, where are the people that are aligned with what you want? And so I've, you know, I think a great first step, if you're just kind of interested in testing the waters is just join a couple of groups right. and see what other people are in there and, you know, get to know people. I think the danger, the danger with groups is that most people go into these groups with the intention of like, like selling something. Right. Like prospecting. People. Prospecting. Yeah. And, and it's not that you can't, not that there won't be opportunities to do business in groups. It's that you want to be a good group member, right? And being yeah. a group, good group member is like learning about who the people are, learning what the group's all about, sharing and what you know, and like all these different things. And so I think a great place to start is, you know, just if you're wanting to just be super frugal about it, it's free. And then um, additionally, you know, this is, this is one of the reasons I didn't necessarily know if we were going to take things in this direction, but this is really one of the reasons that I started Mastermind Evolution, Right. Because right. I wanted to create a group of business owners who are uh, who are really committed to growing their business and achieving more, but also wanted to do that without having to spend twenty five, thirty five, fifty thousand dollars um, to do it at a much more reasonable cost and get that community feeling and get the education and all these other things. And so, you know, if anybody's listening to this and, uh, you know, you want to check that out, I'd, I'd love for you to check that out. Um, I could put, I put the link up here, but, but I think that that's another great place, right? And right. It does, and it doesn't have to be this group, right? I know that this is a great group. I've been very deliberate about how we've created it. I mean, you will have to put up with you. So it's not, it's not all good. We can't, we can't just put positives here. we got to you know, focus That's on the, the reality, all, all no, good other than you being there, you know. Oh, we got a long list of pros and then the cons is like James is part of this. James is leading yeah. this. Or just, just James, just James. <laughs> James, <laughs> James in general, is his scent <laughs> is all over this. Um, so, so I think those are, I think those are two great ways, right? Find something uh, that's lower, lower risk. Um, obviously the group will not be curated, you know, mastermind evolution, you know, one of the things that we do there is there's an application process and you know people have to apply to be part of the group just because it's not crazy expensive doesn't mean I, I don't want to screen people out right i want to make sure that we are bringing the people into that group because the truth is since we're on this topic and we're talking about the importance of who you surround yourself with like although this is my group that i've created and i'm leading this group i'm still influenced on some level by the people that are in there Right, of course. Right, and and I don't want you know people who show up as victims. I don't want people who don't take personal responsibility. I don't want all those people. So you know, um, so we do have an application process to make sure that the group is awesome because that's how that's how um, important I think it is to surround yourself with the right people. Even if you've had a measure of success, like you get more and more clear on how important this whole topic of this conversation is, and so. I don't know. I think I think those are two great places for people to start. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've made a you know. I think in 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 you explaining that, I think you've made some really uh, some some secondary points there to to zoom in on for people because, like you've said, you know, at, at bare basics entry level, people could access free online communities. And like you say, there's, you know, some positives there. It's freely accessible, and you can do it within sixty seconds from now. You can be in a community group and surrounding yourself with like minded people. Now the the, the 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 balancing act that you've got there when you've got something that's freely accessible is that it is freely accessible not just to you to every other person walking the planet yeah and then and then you you know you then you've got to be really really careful because that's in the same breath of like almost having an open door policy to the people you're surrounding yourself with which is yeah. kind of what people might be looking to alter and change so you've got to be careful with that and I think what you've just highlighted in in talking about mastermind evolution the way you do things is is I think you know what people will typically see if you take the the, the ground level as a free online community, really to go higher and 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 
better, higher quality, better, however you want to term it, you really do want to seek out things that aren't necessarily push button simple to get into. You know, so like you've just said there, in order to access your mastermind program, people do have to fill in an online application. You then will have a conversation with those people and make sure that A, they're right for the group and B, that they think it's the right group for them. So there is a process. There are hurdles to go through yeah. to jump over to be there. So one view, and I'll say this for everybody's lessons, like one view, if you've never done that type of thing for before as somebody that's looking to join, you might at first feel a bit jaded in the sense of like, hey, I'm a good person. Let me into this group. Why are you making me jump through these hoops? I want you to shift your perspective, though, because what you want to realize is should you be fortunate enough to get in any said group, James's or otherwise, you want to be thankful that everybody else inside of there also went through the same process. Right. So now you have almost leveraged James or other companies um, kind of uh, processes to give yourself a degree of confidence and, and, and certainty in the fact that, oh, by nature of me getting into this group that was, I had to go through some hoops to get in here. Everybody else had, did too. They've been vetted. So I can feel quite confident that the people I'm now surrounding myself with are the right type of people that I should be surrounding myself with. And I think what people will find as they're starting to look at masterminds and things, I know, James, you with Mastermind Evolution, you've really mixed up the mastermind formula. You know, the mastermind formula is, is the higher the price, the higher the caliber of people. And unfortunately, though, that might mean that most people simply cannot even get into a high level mastermind. I mean, well, you know, we've, been we've been in masterminds at 25 grand, 50 grand a year. And yes, when you get into that, you're, you're pretty certain like, oh, I've, I've got to be surrounded with some pretty successful people to some degree, you know, but what you've done is actually something quite incredible. I remember having a conversation with you like, wow, why are you doing this at such a low price? This makes no sense for what you're giving to people. And I remember you telling me, well, I, I want there to be an entry level so that we've got a vetted good group, but I don't want there to be a barrier whereby good, genuine, you know, hardworking entrepreneurs can't get in because it's so expensive. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. And then the, and the, the other thing um, is also true just because somebody has the bank account to pay 25, 35, 50,000, whatever, a hundred thousand dollars doesn't mean that they're a good person also. Oh right? yeah. Like, I've met some real rich morons. There's, there's like, you know, masterminds that uh, <laughs> I've been in where, you know, people have gotten, you know, indicted by the FTC for outright fraud and all this sort of thing. And it's like, well, they were able to pay the entry fee for the mastermind because they had, you know, um, scam people, but it doesn't mean like they were legit. And so, you know, I think that while it raises the entry barrier for people, at least on that financial success level, there's really, I don't think there's enough qualifications going on to sort of verify that, okay, this, this person has good character and good integrity and, um, you know, is going to conduct themselves in a way that, uh, you know, we would want to read about on the front page of, you know, the paper, so to speak. Um, and, and so I think, yeah, the, the approach that we're taking is, you know, let's qualify people based on, you know, their, their character and their, their merits, but let's also, um, let's also curate things to make sure we have a great group. And I know that many of you guys are listening to this through audio and I put the, uh, the link up here for people who are streaming this on YouTube and Facebook, but it's just mastermindevolution.net forward slash apply dash now. That's mastermindevolution.net forward slash apply dash now. So, so anyway, I mean, I think that's, you know, for me, the, the mastermind evolution concept and, and the, uh, the low barrier on the financial side is also a, a give back for yes. me. Yeah. Because, because of what we've been talking about and because of how powerful being part of uh, great groups and support the support and the generosity of these groups over the years has been for me. I feel um, I feel I feel like I just want to be very generous with that and give people who aren't sure where to start um, a great place. And and frankly, we've got people in there who have been part of other groups and they're just like, wow, this is this is curated and we really like this. And so, um, you know, that that's sort of the motivation there. 
Yeah, no, that's epic. And I, I've got a couple of things. See, see if we've got time just to just to go over these quickly. So one thing that I'd love to throw up in the air and see 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 what you want to say on this is: should what type of group should someone be looking for? Do you know? Should we be going to if we want to look at a mastermind? Should we be looking for a mastermind where everybody in that group is more successful than you, whatever people's, whether that's financial or whatever? Should I be looking to put myself in an environment where I am the least successful person in this room? Or should I be looking to put myself in an environment where I'm, you know, there's people of varying degrees and I'm maybe not the least successful, but, you know, there are people less successful, but there are people that are more. What's your, what type of room would you like to put yourself in? Let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean, at, at this stage, um, I would, I would prefer to be the least successful person in the room. Right. Um, I think it's, uh, but it's, but it's always a mixed bag because if, um, because then if you're the least successful person, I think there's also this feeling and, and who knows, like defining that success is also very uh, sure. unclear and ambiguous. Um, but it's, it's also important for you to feel like you can contribute to the group too, you know, and you might be, you know, let's just say you might have the smallest business, but you might have expertise that could benefit other people. So you might be least successful, you know, net income, but you might be most successful at this one thing that's like incredibly powerful and amazing. Right. right. And so I think right. that painting with a broad stroke of like least successful, most successful is um, sort of a little bit of an illusion. I think what, what I'm looking for in a group is more along the lines of Will the people in here help me level up my game? And will I also be able to help them level up theirs? Right. Then that that feels very meaningful and very balanced to me. If it were a situation where, you know, I like I have no possible way of helping them level up their game in any way, I'd be like, I like, I don't know. Like I'm gonna feel that deficit of not contributing. And the opposite would also be true. Um, where, you know, I'd feel like, well, I'm, I have nothing that I feel like I'm getting from these people in this group. And so I'm only giving, and I don't think that's balanced either. And so I'm, I'm trying to find a group that where I can, you know, where, where I can have a healthy give and take in that relationship and in that network. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, I, I'd, I'd have echoed the same, the same response. I, th I think that's uh, absolutely spot. And I think one of the things, you know, I say this for the benefit again, like, I remember first joining the, you know, the first ever mastermind and I'm sure not everybody's like this way, but I, I didn't feel comfortable about putting myself in that environment to begin with, to be honest, it felt pretty uncomfortable. I was worried about things like, oh gosh, what if, what if I don't have anything of value to share? You know, what if everyone is smarter than me and I seem dumb, you know, and, and, and I think you, 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 you said something really great there. And that is that, you know, yes, we can say success is financial or this or that, but I've, I've been in rooms with people that have, you know, hundred million plus businesses and they've been asking me advice, you know, I, and, and sometimes you do sit there in disbelief, like, wow, you're asking me for advice. This is fascinating. I think what, what you said is, is that, you know, success is deemed in totally different ways and you probably have some level of knowledge or you've experienced something in your business, in your efforts that other people may not have yet, or they yeah. haven't experienced it in the same way you have. So you are just simply being able to share something is helpful for those people. I mean, we could say for this show, we know we've got people that on paper financially have much bigger businesses than you and I, yet they tune into the show and they tell us, I take something away from most shows. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and I think that demonstrates a great point. But I know we've only we've only got a few minutes left, but I, I just thought an interesting thing, unless you've got something different uh, to go over, but I thought an interesting thing maybe that we could both just share a couple of things on is what... What's what what takeaways have you gotten from putting yourself in those environments that maybe you didn't expect? Wow, um, I, that's that's such a powerful question, and I would I would need another several hours to probably fully <laughs> answer that. I think um, I think the biggest thing is one the inspiration from seeing what other people are doing is yeah. so powerful. Uh, you cannot discount how inspiring it is to see a good friend or somebody that you know reasonably well just continue to drive their business forward and get great results in their personal and professional life. So the inspiration, I think, is the other is one thing. And the other thing that I would quickly throw in there is um, humility. Humility for seeing people 
uh, do things that you wouldn't have thought of, for hearing great ideas from other people, for seeing the way that certain people choose to live their lives, and just a humility that it's okay that you don't have everything figured out and you're not supposed to have everything figured out. And that's the benefit of being part of a group. And so um, I would, uh, I would, I would share, I would share those are, those are the two things uh, from my perspective. Yeah, no, that's epic. And I think, I think from me, and I think the main experience I draw this from is, you know, you and I both were in Russell, Russell Brunson's mastermind. I think when I went into the mastermind environment, I expected to get all my value from the person running the mastermind. Hmm. And I was completely not to take away from Russell, obviously speak incredibly highly of everything he's done and how he's helped, but I couldn't believe how much more value there was from the peer group that was actually a part of it. Also, and those are, you know, you and I, we know each other and we form, you know, it's our, on the day we record this, it's our four year anniversary of when we had the first show, I believe. <laughs> you know, how do right. we know each other? How did this all come about? We were both attending that same mastermind, never knew each other before. Now look what's come of it and what we've been able to do together. And like, I think both of us, you know, both have come away with, you know, genuine lifelong friends from being in that environment and people that we can all call upon, you know, at moments where we need some advice or need to talk to somebody. And that to me was probably the, uh, you know, one of the greatest things you've been able to come away from the mastermind and still have friends to call upon. It's not just those, those two days or that 24 hours you're in that room. It's what happens outside of that room and the people you've met and the connections you've created. And in line with everything that we spoke about here today, creating those connections and building that network that's there for you, not just when you're in the room, but every single day moving forwards because of the connections yeah. and friendships you've made, you can't put a price on that. You, no, you I, I, that's, that's absolutely right. And I think, uh, you know, I hope that even if just one person listening to this today takes away, you know, get involved with the group surround who it's, you know, it's important with who you surround yourself with and all of those things, this, uh, this whole conversation would have been worth it because this is so, so powerful. And, um, you know, and, you know, if you guys are interested in joining me, in mastermind evolution, then just go to mastermindevolution.net forward slash apply dash now. But uh, we got to wrap it up right now. We're getting uh, asked to uh, take the show off the air. Um, yeah. And uh, we uh, we appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you so much. Um, especially uh, shout out to our listeners in Zhang Zhao. Appreciate yes, you guys. Indeed. Um, and shout out um, to Chiggs. I just saw he's been commenting along. I Sorry I didn't oh, awesome. uh, yeah. pull out your comments there. Great to have you guys here today. And we will talk with you guys next time. See you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Just the Tips, where we believe business should be profitable and fun. For show notes, links, and other information on our guests, visit justthetipsshow.com. For more information on how to connect with Dean Holland, visit deanholland.com. And if you'd like to go from being a hustling entrepreneur to an effective CEO, capable of running your company without being stuck in the day-to-day, Visit me for free training and resources at jamespfreel.com. Our theme music is Happy Happy Game Show by Kevin McLeod. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License.